Hello everyone. I'm very glad that you joined our meeting. This is the second meeting which we organized together with Malaysia team. Uh, last time we organized Share Your Passion event in which Santos from Malaysia talked about his passion, which is playing violin. Uh, it was cool because uh, he was playing live. And uh, today we have uh, we have Share Your Culture event and we will be talking about um, Polish and Malaysian culture, food, holidays and tradition. Uh, I think that we have the best speakers in the world and because we have Angelika Palov from Poland and we have Sherwin, Haile, Josephine and April from Malaysia. So a lot of speakers, the best speakers in the world. And uh, we will start from presentation about Polish culture and then about the Malaysian culture. And at the end of this meeting, you can ask us a questions. We'll have a short Q&A section and at the end. And I think that that's it. This meeting will be recorded. Uh, so we will share a link to it. I think that we will upload it on the YouTube channel. And I think that's it from my side. Thank you one more time. Thank you everyone for joining us and uh, Angelica, I think that the stage is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Um, one more question. Could you, can you hear me still good? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes okay, very well. So um, my name is Angelika. In TTMS, I work as a validation specialist. And uh, today, as Marlena said, I will present you some information about uh, Poland. I hope that those information will be uh, interesting for you. So welcome to Poland. And uh, during um, this presentation, I will tell you something about general information about Poland, our multi-structure character, typical dishes, uh, Polish hospitality, uh, typical Polish holidays, and famous people from Poland. Um, so let's start from general, general information. Mm, uh, there are three main symbols of Poland. Uh, the flag of Poland, which consists of two strips with the same uh, dimension. Um, the upper part of the flag is white, and another one uh, which is below is red. Uh, white eagle is another of Polish symbol. And it is uh, present on Polish coat of arms as eagle with uh, gold crown on the red background. The head of eagle is returned on the right side. Uh, the beginnings of the coat of arms uh, are associated with person who named is Lech. And he is considered to be a creator of Polish statehood. Uh, the legend says that when he was uh, in Gniezno, which is one of the Polish cities, he looked up and he saw a white eagle on the red sky and that view apparently was delighted him very much and he decided to use this memory with white eagle in the coat of arms. Um, the third important symbol is the national anthem of Poland, uh, which is called Mazurek Dąbrowskiego. The first title of it was Jeszcze Polska nie zginęła, or in English, Poland is not yet lost. Uh, those words are also the first verse of anthem. Uh, the lyric of it was written by Józef Wibicki in 1797 in Italy. And the music is folk tune uh, of Mazurek, which is our national dance, but the composer of it is unknown. And when we talk about Polish symbols, we cannot forget about uh, the Polish language. Uh, foreigners, so when asked how they perceive the Polish language, they find, define it as uh, rough, uh, fast, sometimes similar in sound to Russian. And many of them compare Polish um, to the sound of searching for the appropriate radio wave. Um, there are many voiced consonants in our language, like uh, and here are some examples of words uh, translated to English in the table, uh, which are um, in English it's easily space, przepraszam, in English sorry, chrząszcz, beetle, dżdżownica, which is warm and szczur, which is rat. And uh, I've got one example of a um, tongue twister in Polish. Um, if you want, you can try to repeat it for after me. Szczebrzeszynie, chrząszcz brzmi w trzcinie. And in English, it is in szczebrzeszyn, a beetle makes sounds in the grass. Uh, 
maybe it is quite hard, but funny. Uh, and now uh, some facts about our location. Poland is located in Central Europe. Um, we are the 69th largest country in the world and ninth largest country in Europe. We've got seven neighbors uh, who are uh, Kaliningrad, uh, Russia, Lithuania, Belarus, uh, Ukraine, Slovakia, Czech Republic and Germany. And when we talk about location, it is worth to mention that in Poland, we've got uh, TTMS offices, which are located in nine different cities. And the company uh, headquarters is located in capital of uh, Poland, which is Warsaw. And now our landscape. The Polish landscape is very diverse. Uh, when visiting our country, uh, you can see uh, lowlands, sea, highlands and mountains. <coughs> Uh, so um, there is something for everyone uh, from the north of Poland borders uh, the Baltic Sea. There are many beautiful beaches and resorts. One of the most interesting places on the coast is the uh, Hel Peninsula, which you can see at the uh, left photo. Uh, next uh, landscape uh, is uh, Mazuran Lake District which is well known from uh, its lakes because there are about uh, 2000 lakes and and this region uh, is uh, well known um, for um, offering a wide range of outdoor activities from sailing to kayaking and uh, swimming um, next place is Białowieża forest which is fascinating to explore the destination whose um, description includes the words last remaining it's uh, a unesco protected wilderness uh, representing the unique uh, european primeval forest and one of the highlights is uh, the chance to spot bison uh, which is a large animal that can um, that is uh, seen uh, as a symbol of uh, Poland. And next landscape is um, the Świętokrzyskie Mountains, in English the Holy Cross Mountains, which are a low range situated in south uh, central Poland mountains. They are the oldest mountains in Poland and some of the oldest mountains in Europe, uh, because past parts of them date uh, back even to 500 million years ago. Uh, and their name is taken from historical Holy Cross cloister, which is situated on one of the highest peaks of, of Świętokrzyskie Mountains, and it houses a relic of um, the Holy Cross. Uh, the Bishtade Mountains, like in the uh, southeast corner uh, of the country, uh, here three national borders meet Poland, Slovakia and the Ukraine. Um, the Bieszczady Mountains are sometimes called the wildest region in the country, as they have plenty of unique wooden, wooded landscapes that are remote and quiet. And next is the Tatra Mountains, that are the highest mountain range in Poland, lying in the south of the country. On the border with Slovakia, uh, their, their highest peak is Mount Rese, which reaches reach um, reach up to uh, 2,499 meters above sea level. Uh, as the only Alpine mountains uh, in Poland, uh, they are highly popular with uh, tourists. And the last one about which I want to tell you uh, is the Stołowe Mountains, in English Table Mountains. Um, they are made up of flat horizontal layers of rocks. Um, they have a unique landform, which they bring to mind man-made objects. Uh, they are originally named Erland Rocks, in Polish Błędne Skały. Uh, which allowed to travel through a dreamlike labyrinth made of stone. Uh, in Poland uh, is a lot of uh, beautiful uh, cities with unique uh, history. The first one is our capital, Warsaw. Um, our, uh, our capital uh, rose like a true phoenix from the ruins to become one of the most interesting and fastest growing metropolises of Europe. Warsaw is uh, an inspire, inspiring and vibrant, combining the ca ca crazy rhythm of the largest business hub of Central Europe with coziness and the um, welcoming attitude of locals. Uh, the main uh, role of uh, this city, of course, uh, to be a capital of Poland, uh, but also um, a country um, center of social, political, economic, scientific and uh, cultural life. 
And next beautiful city is Kraków, which is um, usually called the capital of kings because there is located a Wawel castle, place where many kings live. There are many charming cities in Poland that have preserved uh, castles from the past. One of the examples is Malborg in the nor north part of Poland uh, with a Teutonic castle. Uh, this is the largest castle in the world measured by the uh, land area. And the next interesting city is Gdańsk, which is a city on the Baltic coast. Uh, it is Poland's principal seaport and presents a contrast of rich history and attractive modernity. Um, now something about uh, mountains. In the foothills um, of the Tatra mountains lies the charming town, uh, which is named Zakopane. Uh, it is a popular tourist uh, resort, which uh, offers plenty of chance, chances to interact with Polish culture. Um, its location at the foot of the Alp like Tatra Mountains make it a major winter sports and health resort center. And uh, the last city about uh, which I will tell you, tell you is Wrocław, uh, which is considered to be one of the most beautiful and romantic cities in Poland. Uh, each city has its own unique symbols, uh, and in case of uh, Wrocław, those are dwarfs. They can be found in every nook and uh, cranny of this city. Uh, Wrocław is also called the city of bridges. It has the most bridges of all cities in Poland and ranks fourth in Europe behind Amsterdam, Venice and St. Petersburg. Um, Poland has multi-structure character. Um, our country is divided into uh, 16 voivodships. Each region uh, has its own specific folk customs, and folk customs include costumes, uh, dances, and dialects. We can say that dialects are something like different varieties of uh, the Polish language, and because of that, uh, Polish language is also sometimes a challenge, even from Poles, because people living in different places call the same things differently. Uh, currently, uh, traditions related to folklore uh, are disappearing. Uh, folk signs can be found mainly in smaller towns and villages where all their residents can be met. And nowadays, it is unlikely to see someone wearing regional clothes in an office. And nevertheless, during some holidays, Poles, especially uh, Highlanders, wear regional uh, costumes, which are characterized by different colors and patterns, uh, which you can see in the picture with the map. The, fo the photos on the right side uh, show people dancing some of Polish original dances, which are Krakowiak, Kujawiak, Mazur and Polka. Uh, those dances are mostly likely full of twists and jumps, but some of them are more calm. Usually they are accompanied by specific folk music uh, varied with uh, voiced instruments. And when I was preparing this presentation, I wanted to find most interesting Polish customs. And among them, I found those that probably most often surprise fortuners. Uh, the first one is celebrating the name day. Uh, you might think that uh, it is enough to celebrate someone's birthday, but not in Poland. The tradition of uh, celebrating name days uh, has developed very strongly in our country. Uh, it has Catholic roots and uh, they revised from the custom of naming children with uh, the names of saints. If you want to check which day you have your name day, just check the calendar. And uh, for example, today uh, names, uh, they are celebrated by Anthony, John and Simon. Uh, second custom, um, almost all movies are dubbed by one male voice and he, this is just uh, in Polish lector. Uh, who is also known as uh, voice over or dubbed overland and um, it is a form of uh, audio visual translation um, it doesn't sound uh, that bad right but uh, let me explain you what the typical polish lector is like in most of movies presented in polish television there is always um there is always the same voice uh, of a male around 15 years old with absolutely no emotions. Um, it doesn't matter if there is a guy, a woman or a child speaking or if uh, it is an action, romantic horror or comedy movie. And uh, the voice of lecturer will always be the same. And uh, the goal to have this voice over in movies instead of uh, full dubbing is uh, that his voice sounds neutral and prevents from distracting the viewers from the movie. 
Um, so, are, so, so, so far, uh, no one of the foreigners that I met in Poland has liked it at all, while for us Poles, um, it is totally okay. Um, when you enter to a Polish home, it is uh, customary to take your shoes off at the door. It wouldn't be surprising because it also occurs in many other cultures in the world, but in Poland, the guest is also given slippers. Uh, so that he doesn't go barefoot. Um, in most countries, uh, ground floor means the first floor. When telling someone that we're living on the ground floor, many foreigners will take the stairs to take um, the elevator or take the, the, the elevator to the first floor. However, in Poland, the ground floor is something like zero floor and the first floor, floor is uh, above it. Um, Pizza. Uh, any Italian would probably have a heart attack if they were served a pizza with ketchup or garlic sauce. But in Poland, it is uh, the most obviously way to eat this popular dish. Um, next is happy birthday song in Polish Stolat. We sing it not only during birthdays, but also during, uh, for example, weddings or um, anniversaries and baptisms. Mm, this song is heard really often in Polish families. Uh, today we've got September, and this is the month when millions of Poles uh, hid for forest and to collect mushrooms. The tradition is spread uh, all across the country, where the woodland areas are famous for their mushroom bearing capacity. And uh, the last one, Home Alone, is uh, one of the newest Christmas traditions. This movie is played on national television every year and watched by over 5 million people. Uh, for for Poles, it, become, it becomes to, so important um, when Home Alone didn't appear in one of the stations for Christmas. Uh, a petition was written about it. Uh, so uh, since then, no one has ever tried to change it. And this movie is part of the Christmas holiday as the gifts, Christmas carols and uh, Christmas trees. Now something about food. Um, if you visit Poland, you must try those dishes. Uh, I don't have enough time to describe every of them, but uh, let's start from pierogi, the dumplings. Um, so pierogi uh, can be cooked or fried. They can be stuffed with meat, vegetables, cheese, fruit, chocolate, accompanied by a sour cream topping or just um, butter. Uh, from street food spots to fancy restaurants, they can be found in uh, um, pretty pretty much everywhere in Poland. Um, next interesting dish is Czernina, uh, in English blood soup. Uh, this soup is uh, made with duck blood and a blend of uh, sugar and vinegar. This sweet and sour soup uh, has very strong associations with Polish culture. Uh, because uh, up until a few centuries ago, uh, if a man asked for his beloved hand in marriage, um, the shade of the Czernina served to him by the bride's family would answer his questions. Golden colored soup stood for yes, while the black version of the soup signified uh, a negative outcome. Uh, fortunately, people can now enjoy this dish in all of its regional varieties without having to worry about what color means. And when it comes to pleasing uh, those with um, uh, those with uh, those with um, sweet tooth, uh, Poland has no shortage of food, food, good foods uh, to offer. One of the best is ratsuche, something like pancakes with apples, next is uh, St. Martin's croissant or just poppy seed cake. And um, I must tell about um, ostepek, which is a type of smoked cheese made of uh, salted sheep's milk. It is said that only gondolier is allowed to sail gondolas in Venice, and in Poland, only Baca, who is traditional sheep herd and Tatra cheese maker, can make ostepek. So grilled ostepek with uh, canberra jam is really essential to try. Uh, Poles are very well known for their hospitality. We love meeting at table with friends at every opportunity. Uh, Polish hospitality is legendary and it doesn't come from today, but from the period of noble manners and feasts. 
Uh, the door to uh, the Polish house was always open to any traveler. It was a matter of uh, common curiosity. Uh, the uh, hospitality uh, was a sign of honor. Uh, Poles uh, loved spending time with uh, friends and family. So if you want to visit somebody in Poland, there is no need to make an announcement. Just knock to his or her door and say hello. Um, the Polish holiday calendar includes a huge number of uh, different types of public, religious and international holidays. I decided uh, to choose uh, only some of them. Here you can see examples of our national holidays, which are National Independence Day um, or National Day of Remembrance of uh, the Warsaw Uprising, Polish National Flag Day uh, or the Third, uh, Consti the third May Consti Constitution Day. And the celebration of national holidays is a very important even uh, which is attended by the Polish army and the president who is uh, Andrzej Duda. When we talk about holidays, um, the most uh, common religious one are Christmas and Easter in Poland. Uh, Poles care very much about maintaining Christmas customs during the Christmas season. The cities are decorated with beautiful illuminations and there are open and marvelous Christmas markets. Uh, we decorate also Christmas trees. Uh, Vigilia is the Christmas dinner, which officially opens uh, the Christmas. On the Christmas table, there should be um, 12 dishes and each of them needs to be tried. Uh, one of the Christmas customs is sharing the wafer and wishing each other. Uh, during Christmas, we spend time with families and sing Christmas carols. The second religious uh, holiday, uh, which is important in Poland, is Easter. The preparation for it may take up uh, to a week. Palm Sunday marks uh, the first day of Holy Week, and uh, with this day is connected one of the Easter customs. People prepare colorful palms, uh, which are made of dry plants and tissue paper, decorating eggs, um, and the final product is called in Polish pisanki. Um, it can be translated like to write. Uh, he, uh, and it is the uh, usual part, part of uh, celebration uh, this holiday. When, uh, uh, on the Easter morning, the whole family gathers together to exchange uh, wishes and eat Easter breakfast. The following day is usually less formal and is often known as uh, Wet Monday in uh, Polish Schmingus Dingus. On that day, people use water guns to soak each other with water uh, and it is uh, a custom especially popular with young people. There are a lot of holidays dedicated for family, like Mother's Day, Father's Day, Children's Day, Grandpa, Grandpa's Day, and so on. Um, in Poland, we celebrate also typical um, for every country holidays, like Valentine's Day and New, Year New Year's Eve. One of the most sweet holiday in Poland is Fat Thursday, uh, which is known for eating large amounts of fatty foods, which are especially ponczki. Uh, it is something like rich uh, filled donuts and favorki, uh, which are crispy, melted on your mouth pieces of dots uh, that are deep fried and speckled with power sugar. Uh, another interesting holiday is Magical St. Andrew's Day, which is a holiday uh, during which you can predict your future. This holiday is connected with different games uh, during which uh, various fortune telling activities take place. Um, and the last part, famous polls. The first one about uh, who I want to tell you is Frederick Chopin, uh, who was a Polish composer and pianist of the Romantic period and who wrote primarily uh, for solo piano. Uh, he was uh, he has uh, maintained worldwide renown as a leading musician of his name and the one whose poetic genius was based on a professional technique that was without equal in his generation. Second one is Arthur Rubenstein, uh, who was a Polish American classical pianist. Uh, he is widely regarded uh, as um, one of the greatest pianists of uh, all uh, time. He received international acclaim for his performances of the music written by a variety of composers and many regard him as one of the greatest shopping interpreters of this time. Um, now somebody from science, uh, Nicolas Copernicus. 
uh, who was an astronomer who placed uh, the sun at the center of the universe, and Maria Kirin, Maria Sokolovska Kirin, who was a scientist who conduced the pioneering research on the radio radioactivity. And next one, Joanna Krupa, who is a Polish-born American model, actress, and animal rights activist. Robert Lewandowski, who is a Polish professional footballer, uh, who plays as a striker for B Bundesliga club Bayern Munich, and is the captain of the Poland national team. And the last one, uh, Karol Wojtyła, who is known as Pope John uh, Paul II. We could talk about Poland for hours. Um, I've got only half an hour, so I try to choose the most interesting facts. I hope that my presentation will encourage you to visit our country. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, <clears throat> thanks for sharing, Etuminka. We had a great session. Um, let me know if you guys can view my screen. No, no. No, yes. Yeah. Mm. Yes, I can see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, first of all, <clears throat> Malaysia, uh, I would like to introduce you about Malaysia. Uh, Malaysia Truly Asia is actually our national slogan for tourism. The reason why is that you can actually uh, explore and uh, all Asian culture in Malaysia itself. So today, uh, me and my, um, my colleagues will be talking about, uh, first of all, we'll briefly introduce you about Malaysia, festival and celebrations, traditional clothing and costume, and lastly is the food. Okay, so for Malaysia wise, uh, if you look into our Malaysian uh, map, you're able to see that Malaysia is made up of two regions. We are divided into two regions. Uh, one of it, we call it as the Peninsula of Malaysia, uh, which is also called as West Malaysia, which is the home to the capital Kuala Lumpur. It covers up overall of 13 state federation of Malaysia. And uh, the next part is uh, where we are we have Sabah and Sarawak located at the east of Malaysia, and they are located on the popular island of Borneo, and it is the only island in the world to be governed by three different countries, which is by Malaysia, Indonesia, and Singapore, sorry, and Brunei. Uh, if you look into our map, uh, TTMS is actually located at uh, Selangor State, which is around uh, 30 minutes from our city center, uh, Kuala Lumpur. And our climate here, uh, we usually have only two types of weather. Uh, it's either uh, sunny or raining. Most of the cities here are usually uh, hot and humid, and uh, Malaysia temperature usually fluctuates between 21 and 32 degrees uh, throughout the whole year. If example, like you know, we would like to enjoy uh, cooler temperature, we, we do have places like uh, Genting Highland, Cameron Highland, where we can enjoy temperatures starting from 25 degrees below. At the same time, we also do have a monsoon season, or we call it like a continuous raining season, which will start around uh, October to March onwards at the eastern side of our peninsula. So during this time, uh, weather is quite rough, and most of the famous tropical islands like Perhentian, Redang, Tioman will be closed, and tourists uh, is not allowed to visit during this, uh, this, uh, this period. But however, all the other parts uh, of Malaysia are not affected. Uh, you still, tourists can still visit, you know, uh, parts like uh, located in our east side, but just that there's not much of uh, beautiful beaches compared to the uh, compared to the west side. Besides the monsoon period, uh, it always can rain in Malaysia because we are actually uh, a tropical destination. And uh, I would like to actually share with you all our famous landmark, uh, Petronas Twin Tower, uh, which is uh, one of our uh, famous uh, twin tower located in our city center. Uh, this Petronas Twin Tower consists of 88 story, and it used to be uh, one of the tallest building in the world from 1998 to 2004. Uh, this tower, if you can see, it's a mixed development. We do have a shopping mall, uh, Surya KLCC. And besides shopping mall, we do have a large 17 acres outdoor park completed with jogging, walking park, 
large, uh, large fountain with a light show. We have wedding pool and also a big children playground. Besides that, we do have a sky bridge at the level 41 and 42 to connect the two main tower. Uh, tourists, like visitors, we can visit this bridge, uh, but is that uh, is chargeable? There's a fee for us to uh, to pay to enter to to visit this bridge. Yeah. So overall, geographically, Malaysia is known for its uh, beach, rainforest, skyscraper, and mountain. Uh, with our rich history and diverse culture, we are also filled with natural uh, attractions like uh, Batu Cave, uh, Gunung Gading National Park, which is located in Sarawak, and we do have Manukan Island located in Sabah, and this is uh, one of our first um, marine national park. But what makes Malaysia special is because of the diversity of our races, uh, region, and culture. Uh, if you look into uh, up to date, uh, this is uh, some of the survey I got it online. We do have the estimate around 32.75 million people. And the races and population consists of uh, Malay, Chinese, Indian, Sabah, and Sarawak. And there's other numerative natives like Orang Asli as well. And uh, mostly languages uh, here, uh, we use Malay. English, Chinese, Tamil, uh, Tamil, and other ethnic languages. Uh, overall, uh, most of Malaysians do speak Bahasa Malaysia because we study this during our schooling days. But English is also widely spoken, especially in business. And we do have a mixed uh, religion of uh, Islam, Buddhist, Hindu, Christian. Uh, all of this uh, uh, Overall, official religion is uh, Islam, but we do have other uh, religion, uh, and it's common to see like mosque, temple, church, which is located in Malaysia. Yeah, next, uh, Haley will actually speak on the festival and celebration. Okay, so for my part, I'll talk about uh, festival and celebration in Malaysia. So the first major celebration in Malaysia is Hari Raya Adil Fitri. This is mostly uh, celebrated by Islamic faith in Malaysia, by the Muslim. So for during these uh, festivals, the Muslim, they will have a lot of like uh, activities. The first one is the feast where they will have a lot of like feast like as shown in the picture where they would home, they would be home cooked. Then the most uh, common feast that have that they have during this celebration is like the ketupat, the red, ayang rendam, lemang and kuti, kueh raya. So secondly, the, before we before we have the celebration, most of the Muslim in Malaysia they actually have this something called this occasion called balik kampung, which means homecoming, where a lot of people they will actually go back to their hometown from major cities like uh, Kuala Lumpur. So this is where they will buy their ticket to go back or they will travel by car to go back prior to the celebration. So after that, when they go home, they will have this celebration of the actual day of Hari Raya. So during this day, they will actually uh, go, the first stop that would, they would have is they would go to the mosque where they, where they will pray during that day. And after praying, they will actually go visit their parents' house. And during this visitation to the parents' house, they actually the elderly people who are older, they will give something called a green packet. So this one is like a bonus for children, for someone who is younger, because inside these uh, packets, they will have money for those children. So during this uh, visitation, they also have these uh, activities where they will ask for the family members, they actually will ask for forgiveness from each other. This is mostly done when they, uh, during the celebration when they want to have a act of like uh, forgiveness. So the most common greeting that they have is like they when they uh, actually do this act, they will say something like Ma'af Sahih dan Batin. So other than that, the, the next, uh, the second major celebration in Malaysia is uh, Chinese New Year, which is mostly, as the title said, uh, celebrated by Chinese. And uh, instead of being called by Chinese New Year, actually most Western, they will actually call this year, this celebration as Lunar New Year. So 
for this one, they we will actually uh, be celebrated by many Chinese with uh, different religions like Buddhist, Confucian, Taoist, who offers who often would offer like prayers. So during this Chinese New Year, we actually have uh, many activities that we have to done. We, we have to be prepared before prior to the celebration itself. So the first one is we have to during Chinese New Year Eve, we actually have to decorate our house with a lot of red color because red color means something new where they means like prosperity for us. So uh, during this time, we will actually uh, celebrate our house with like lanterns and those like wording that we have, like it means like bring prosperity, bring wealth to our family and our house. So other than that, we also would have a reunion dinner during our Chinese New Year Eve. So in this uh, dinner, we actually, um, how is it? our family would come together and we will have a dinner during this time. This is where uh, one of the times like uh, during the whole year, we will have a lot of uh, our family members to come by, to come to, like, together and eat and like just talk about uh, what is happening in our life. Something like that, just to like catch up on what is going on. So other than that, we will have during the Chinese New Year Eve, we also would have like fire firecrackers and fireworks uh being like put up or light up during like at the midnight of Eve, like um after it's like uh we want to celebrate this is because we want to celebrate chinese new year at the first minute when it uh, occurs so but then for malaysia we actually i don't think now we have a lot of firecrackers now because of, like, of the regulation and the safety when there's airplane going around so for now we don't have much fireworks being light up then other other than that, during Chinese New Year Eve, and uh, during Chinese New Year, I mean, we also give something that is like similar to uh, what we what Muslims celebrated in Hari Raya Adifiti, where they will give money. So for us, we have a red packet, but then for most Muslim, they have a green packet. But then inside the packet is the same thing. Where elderly, they would give children money for celebration. So the third. Uh, celebration is called Deepavali. This is mainly celebrated by Hindus, which means Indians in Malaysia. They also call this Deepavali as Diwali. So Deepavali, they actually, in Hindus, they actually uh, celebrate Deepavali mainly at home by, by performing traditional customs. So one of them is like also the same thing like we have they have to separate and they have to decorate their house but with different like uh, setup and occasion like for Hindus they actually clean their house then they will put up this um, as you can see these are called the diyas like the uh, they have this oil lamp thing they will light up on their balconies and threshold they will also put uh, something like call the rangoli or column at their house entrance this is where they will actually design this themselves with like something made up of like colored rice and uncooked grains so one of the customs that they actually go through is oil bathing this actually taken this oil bathing is, is actually taken early in the morning of diwali they will actually do this to shed off like all the dirt and the evil in within their body. So other than that, they will actually also celebrate by uh, eating sweets and del delicacy where they will actually share this uh, delicacy with each other or where they will actually share something like the the most prominent one, <laughs> actually the, the, the one uh, delicacy that I like the most is called Muruku. They actually share this with themselves or with their families or neighbors. And other than that, they'll actually uh, shop for gift or they will actually go for shopping like the most biggest, biggest uh, shopping that they have at the of the year where they will buy a lot of new things like they, what they want like for the new clothes and new maybe stationaries oh. and all that. And they also would visit uh, their families or even neighbors during the celebration. And this is one of the place where the Hindus would mostly go for prayer 
during Diwali. This is uh, known as Batu Cave, one of the um, attractive places in Malaysia. So the last celebration, major celebration in Malaysia is called Gawai Dayak, which is also known as the Harvest Festival. This uh, Gawai, Gawai Dayak is also is celebrated only on the 1st of June of every year in Sarawak only. This is mostly, mostly celebrated in Sarawak instead of uh, the whole Malaysia. So they were, because they were mostly, um, they are more prominent for East Malaysian. So for Gawai, they, it means festival and Dayak means indigenous people in Sarawak, meaning this festival is actually mostly celebrated by indigenous people in Sarawak. So the first custom that they have or traditional that they have is a traditional dance that is known as Nyajat Dan. So this one is the, where they dance to thank the God, like uh, how they have taken care of their crops uh, from growth until harvesting season, where they thanks the God to where they provide things that they need for those harvesting. So second is they will actually have a competition like alcohol competition is called thwak competition. This is where the thwak means it's like, a, if I'm not wrong, it's like a alcohol they make themselves, then they will pass up because they will live in Sarawak. It's like the indi indigenous people there is actually quite uh, unique because they live in a house that is not common to us, where we live in a one big house, but instead they will live in a long house. They are called long house. As, as you can see here, this is the example of long house they will actually go from one end to the other end they will actually visit each uh, family where they will have to drink the thwak meaning the alcohol that they are prepared by the family itself so this custom actually this competition actually lasts from late evening to uh, the next morning so other than that they also have this uh, tradition where they will have a uh, something known as like, uh, how to say, potluck fashion uh, food, where they will prepare a lot, uh, a bunch of food for option, and they will actually uh, make in a big portion for the whole village so that they can eat whenever they are hungry. They don't have to wait or they, they don't have to prepare themselves. They just can just eat and then they are full. And other than that, they also have a it's like a custom for them, a tradition for them. They will have a pig being slaughtered as part of the uh, tradition where they will cook the pig as a um, dish. That's all for my part. So next will be Josephine and she will actually talk about our clothing and costumes. Okay, thank you Haley, for the time given. So during my presentations, I will share with you about our traditional clothing and also costume for most of Malaysians, including Sabah and Sarawak side. So we can see, uh, do you, one moment. <laughs> okay, in this traditional clothes and uh, costume, so we have uh, in uh, West Malaysia, we have uh, Chinese, uh, Malay and also uh, Indian. And when it comes to Sabah Sarawak, we have uh, Dayak people. Uh, orang Ulu, or I would say uh, we call it uh, Orang Kayan. And also uh, for Sabah side, they have uh, people uh, from uh, the ethnic of Bajau, Murut, and also Kadazan. So uh, we can see here we have like a beautiful and also colorful uh, costume or, or attire for our local Malaysians. And uh, normally we will wear this uh, traditional costume or attire during the uh, formal uh, ceremony or a marriage ceremony and also during the cultural uh, event itself. So I will start uh, the presentations for a Malay traditional cloth. So for the lady, they have two types of uh, clothes, which is we call baju kebaya and also baju kurong. And for the guy is baju melayu, okay? And this is for our um, Chinese uh, uh, ethnicity. So they have like uh, like like uh, my other colleague mentioned. So the, the the popular color that they will wear will be red because it bring like a good um, uh, vibes and also a positive vibe. So we can see that they have all like red in the clothing and also this one we call Cheong Sam, but I'm not sure for the guy what will be called. 
So yeah, that's what uh, the Chinese traditional clothes. And then for uh, uh, Indian traditional clothes, so we have uh, for the, the men, they call like a kurta pyjama or dhoti kurta. So we, we can see that, you know, that they have uh, like a very nice uh, clothes, I would say. And for the lady, uh, we will call it like um, sari and they have uh, the, 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 the uh, I would say the material that they use is a very long because I want one uh, used this one before and it's like six or five meter. So it's quite long for for them to, you know, for us to use during the Deepa Valley uh, occasions. And when it comes to um, Sarawak traditional clothes, so as we all know, uh, in Sarawak, they have like more than 26 ethnics actually. So I only listed like four, uh, four major ethnics uh, in our presentations with each Bidayu, Lunbawa, uh, Iban, and also Kayan. So uh, normally all these, uh, I would say, uh, costumes, they will uh, come with the beads. It's more like a glittering sequin uh, sequence and also beads and it's very heavy and costly so let's say if you want to have like a um, full uh, uh, costume like this one or this one it will cost like five to eight thousand ringgit malaysia so it's um, very expensive to have all of this uh, uh, i would say uh, material if, if uh, and we normally will wear it during our festival our cultural festival or also during the marriage uh, ceremony And when it comes to um, the Sar uh, Sabah side, and we, they have like 23 um, uh, ethnics, but here I only listed three, which is Kadazan, Dusun, uh, Bajau, and Murut. So as we all can see, also they have the same um, material, I would say same uh, bits uh, that, that they use to, to, to sew on their um, uh, clothing. And it's also quite heavy and very costly. And this is uh, the, the, the normal um, attire that they will use during uh, like formal uh, ceremony. So I think from my side, that's all. And I will share the next presentations uh, to my colleague, April. All right. Hi, guys. Uh, so I'll be sharing uh, famous Malaysian food. Uh, that we have here. So first one will be, hold on, yeah. Um, all right. All right, so the first one we have is Malay food. Uh, it's pretty famous here in Malaysia. Uh, so, of course, first thing first is our nasi lemak. In other words, it's actually coconut rice um, with anchovies. Um, if you can see peanuts, eggs, cucumber, but it also comes with fried chicken. There are multiple side dishes that you can order uh, nasi lemak with. So this is normally we will have this for breakfast. Uh, but here in Malaysia, you can have it for breakfast, lunch, dinner, supper. Um, it, it's your choice. And then we have the famous satay. Um, in English, that would be uh, basically just um, lean um, chicken. You can go for chicken, mutton, beef, uh, and it's actually just chicken on a stick. Uh, but yeah, it, it's served with peanut sauce, uh, cucumber, and also onion. And we also have a... Um, Another one that's served with ketupat, which is like some sort of like sticky rice. And then we have ayam perci, which is basically barbecue chicken served with peanut sauce. Uh, it's very famous, especially during Raya. So, yeah. Um, next is... is uh, Chinese food. So Chinese food, uh, first things first, is basically their mixed dish, dish, dishes. So Chinese food is very famous uh, for uh, family gatherings. Uh, they will serve up very huge portion. If you can see the picture here, you have steamed fish, you have butter prawns, uh, basically anything you want. <laughs> Uh, you know, that that uh, they can basically cook it up. So if you can see here, all this mixed dishes. And the second thing we have here is actually dim sum. So dim sum is basically steamed 
um, pork, but it comes in various um, style. So if you can see these pictures here, you can actually serve it up with um, tomato sauce, chili sauce. So yeah, they have various dishes on how they make dim sum. And the last here you can see is actually bakute. So bakute is actually a herbal pork soup, uh, which always serves with garlic rice and a side of um, uh, chilies and um, soy sauce. So yeah, this is actually one of the famous dishes for um, Chinese because it's considered to be healthy as well. It's made up from herbal soup. And the next one, I think it's Indian food. So Indian food here, uh, we have the we have two types. One will be a traditional Indian food where um, you can have things like bread, which is uh, what we call roti chanai. You can have tose. Tose is made out from rice, rice flour, fermented rice flour. So it's a bit. It has a little bit of the sourish taste. Uh, you have naan which comes with butter naan, garlic naan, cheese naan. So whatever you can put on it, you can actually serve it. So it comes with multiple dishes, side dishes as well. So you have all sorts of curry, of course. The curry is not to be missed. You have mutton curry, chicken curry. Um, so yeah, that's all to be served um, as side dishes with those breads. And of course, we have our local Indian food. In other words, uh, in Malaysia, we actually call them mama food. So they're actually local Indian and they're famous for their mean goreng, which is basically fried yellow noodles, but they throw in everything. You can have it with prawns, you can have it with fried dry tofu, um, of course, lots of veggie, lots of eggs. Uh, they also have, we local Indians here also have bread, which is same thing, roti chanai, chapati. <laughs> I'm sorry, P.I. <laughs> And, and last but not least, it's actually the local Indian food mixed rice. In other words, it's actually called nasi kandar. Uh, it's basically the most simple dish, but it's absolutely amazing because it comes with white rice. It comes with multiple curries. Uh, you can have it with fried chicken, fried fish, anything that you want. It comes with a boiled egg and of course, assorted veggies as well. And last but not least is actually um, Sabah and Sarawak food. So that is where I'm from. So let's start off with Sabah. So Sabah has um, quite a unique dish. I don't see it a lot here in Kel, but it actually comes with, uh, they don't, not to say they don't eat normal rice, they do, but it's actually wrapped up in uh, banana leaf because it becomes a little bit sticky, but it's sort of served with uh, multiple dishes. Uh, if you can see the picture here, you actually have salted fish, salted egg, um, you have uh, veggie, you have an, another thing called uh, ulam. Basically, it's a uh, raw fish with lots and lots of onions, chili and vinegar. Um, and for Srawa, uh, the first one here, this is actually called Laksa Srawa. So it's uh, quite similar to Kari Laksa, but it's uh, more thicker and um, they don't actually use yellow noodles. They actually use rice noodles. And... <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Okay, and this one is actually uh, what, in other words, is actually called kolok mi. So basically, it's the most simplest dish as well. It's basically just dry noodles topped off with um, barbecue pork. And this one right here is actually uh, a famous dish uh, by the Dayaks. This is actually either chicken, pork, or fish cooked in bamboo leaves or bamboo shoots. And then... And the last one will be, if you can see the pictures over here, so Malaysian cuisines are actually combined locally with sauce herbs and spices. So it varies uh, and the cooking style actually varies. So, you know, when you go to different shop, it's actually different styles of cooking. Uh, but what makes us famous is actually for our food as well in Malaysia. Uh, you know, we have a unique combination of sweet, sour, uh, very rich and very spicy. Why very rich is I think, I believe that we use a lot and a lot of coconut milk. Um, taste better. So yeah, these are uh, some of the um, 
dessert that you can get during Hari Raya or you can get on a normal day basis. Um, yeah, so these are just another few more foods that you can actually get here in Malaysia. And that's it by me. Thank you. Okay. So I suppose that this is the time for questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, do you have any questions about Polish or Malaysian culture? I have one question for Angelica. Yes. Okay, just now you mentioned about Polish customs, right? So whenever someone that goes to your house, you are, I mean, they are given the slippers for guests, right? Yes. So what, how many slippers actually do you all keep means that, uh, you know, sometimes maybe you go in a group of people. So is it those, uh, uh, maybe slippers are not enough, then these guys are just, you know, on their barefoot or anything? So uh, in Polish houses, there is a lot of slippers. Uh, so um, not, don't worry if you uh, come to visit us, of, 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 for sure we will give you one of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Basically, it seems like uh, uh, just a bit of uh, like uh, maybe Japanese culture uh, where they actually wear slippers at home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, OK. All right. That's all for me at the moment. Who next? What is the next question? Martin, I can see that you raise your hand. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask about uh, European names you sometimes uh, use because I work with several people from Malaysia and they, uh, apart from their uh, traditional names, have uh, names like Howie or, uh, or Sunny. Uh, is it? Is it uh, I, I always wondered how how do you acquire those names? Do you choose them from, from for yourself, or are they uh, assigned somehow? I think Joseph will be the best person to answer this question, right? <laughs> Why me? <laughs> I think I think mostly um, Chinese really? 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 they do have yeah they do have uh, such uh, name creation because uh, Chinese they always have a uh, Chinese name and uh, when we grew up during college schooling days we usually uh, it's either the family pick up a name for us or we create our own name. Actually, yeah, so, so so not yeah. Behind the reason is because sometimes a Chinese name is a bit difficult to pronounce. They are names that are difficult to pronounce. I, I think uh, basically you call it first name, all right? And uh, we seldom use last name uh, unless uh, maybe meeting up as a client or something that, uh, you know, we introduce ourselves. Other than that, it's actually more for convenience of uh, uh, greeting each other. Well, it's difficult to recognize which is the first and the last name. When it comes to <laughs> yes. people. No, for Chinese be easy. Chinese is easy. I, I still have difficulty. <laughs> yes. Normally the first one is the last name, right? The first one, yeah. yeah. We, we normally have uh three, I mean how do you put it? Three, three words. That's our three words, all right? Basically is that unless there is one that came with uh four, but those are because their surname, I mean they are Last name is long. I mean, it's just uh, unique. Where you, there is one is called Ao Yong, A U space Y O N G. Mm -hmm. One, one of them. Okay. Thank you very much for explaining. Welcome. Who is next? What's other question? Sorry, I just remember something for Angelica. Fat <laughs> Thursday. I'm interested more in some of the food. <laughs> Fat <laughs> Thursday. 
So, so is, is it uh, every week you will have a uh, Fat Thursday? So means, uh, you know, is it like uh, giving ourselves a opportunity to uh, not feel guilty of uh, taking, you know, fatty uh, food? <laughs> unfortunately not. We've got Fatty uh, Thursday only once a year. Oh, only once a year. Okay, yes. so everyone must be very crazy for that. <laughs> yes, this day is really crazy. Okay, okay, all right. We, we eat a lot of sweets. Ah, okay. So Fat Thursday is not a public holiday, right? In Poland? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, so so first of all, I would like to uh, say many, many thanks to, to all of our speakers. You did a great job. You are really good speakers. So thank you, Angelica, Sherwin, Hailey, Josephine and April. And it was very interesting for me. Even listening about my culture was very, very interesting. So, so one more time, thank you very much. And uh, I hope that all of you have a fun. Thank you for join, uh, joining this meeting. Um, I will close the recording in a minute. And uh, if you would like to go back to this meeting, you will be able because we will upload it to the YouTube. And what else? What else? I wish you a great weekend. Thank you very much, everyone. And and also thanks to uh, Poland team, uh, Angelica on the presentation. And uh, it's quite interesting to know each other culture actually. Yeah, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you, Poland team. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Bye bye. Thanks, thanks guys. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.